Are you ready to dig into commitment with me? Oh my goodness. This is going to be a good one, y'all. Listen, we are starting out this week talking about how do we define commitment and really understanding and embracing that God was committed to us first. And the most important action we can take in our life is to be committed to him. So we are going to dig into definitions. I got a lot of scripture for you this week from the Old Testament to the New Testament and all over. So I hope you've got a pen and paper and you're ready to go. If you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, you might not know that I have a YouTube channel. So get on over to YouTube, Aaron Harrigan. There's the Hustle With Heart podcast playlist where you can actually see me recording the podcast and, um, you know, put a face with the voice. I don't know if that's a good thing, but here we go. All right. So first and foremost, let's talk about what does commitment mean? So commitment in terms of a relationship is to give our trust or charge for safekeeping, right? And don't we do that in our marriages, in our friendships, and most certainly with the Lord, right? But it's also to bind or obligate as by a pledge or assurance. And what does that mean for us as God is committed to us? And what does that mean for our business? So you may ask yourself one of the following questions about commitment and your business. And this is what we're going to seek to really unpack and open up during our episodes this month. So first and foremost, how do we define commitment as Christian businesswomen, right? How do we know that God directs us, <clears throat> commands us to be committed in our businesses? How do we put commitment into discipline? Like, what does that look like on a daily basis? Like, not just that we have a to-do list, but we actually have a to-do list that moves us forward in our assignment. And then lastly, how does keeping our commitments develop us and I know you want to know this, grow our businesses. So you may look at that and realize that the four keys of redefining hustle are in there, define, direct, discipline, and develop. And we're going to use those keys to navigate this idea of commitment. So I did a little bit of research and was looking up what does it mean to be committed? Like biblically, what does that say? And where are the scriptures that talk about that? And I came across a fantastic article in Christian Today magazine. So this link to the actual article is in the show notes. I really hope that you'll go read the whole thing because I'm only bringing a few things to light in the episode today. But if you're watching this on YouTube, the link is on the screen right now. And basically, there were five or six things that it says um, that we can define commitment, how we can define commitment biblically. But it really comes down to these three things that I want to bring forward today. Trust, consistency, and being all in. So this is what it means to trust. It's trusting God, which requires us to love him. It requires us to make sacrifices. So think surrender and trusting that he has fully equipped and qualified us for these businesses that he's given us, right? That he may shift us and he may redirect us, but he has completely prepared us to do the work that he's given us to do. What scares us is actually stepping in at how big that could be or how much time it would take or who will actually come along with us. Those are all things that I struggle with, friends, which is probably why he gave me trust as my 2022 word this year. Number two, consistency, doing certain things on a regular basis. And we're going to unpack more about consistency in March, but really consistency in doing what he's given us to do on a regular basis. And then lastly, it involves us being all in. It involves us giving all of ourselves, giving everything that we have to follow him and be obedient to him even and especially when it doesn't look the way we thought. Because if you had asked me 12 years ago when I started my network marketing business, if I would be doing this, if I would be coaching women one-on-one -on -one in pursuing success God's way, what did that even mean then? I have no idea, but I can tell you this, it didn't look like this when I thought of where I would be going in business. But being all in means that we are fully surrendered to do it his 
way and to give him everything that we have. So if you're ready, we're going to go to some scripture. We're going to start with the biggest proof that God has committed to us. And that, my friends, is John 3.16. Now, I'm just going to read it out loud for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That we are to be convicted in our belief. Apologies, I have a little bit of a cough. <clears throat> Get behind me, Satan. You're not going to stop me talking about the Lord. That there is no other reason bigger than this for us to be committed to him. That he would give his son. His son, who was at the beginning with him, as we know from John 1.1. Excuse me. I am so sorry, y'all. All right. <coughs> so that's number one. But now let's go back into the Old Testament and see what Moses's final letter of instruction, which wasn't a letter, he was saying it out loud, to the Israelites told them. Now, here we are in Deuteronomy. Um, the Israelites have wandered for 40 years. Many of them died in the wilderness. All of that first generation, like they are not going into the promised land. And guess what? Neither is Moses. Like that's a big surprise, right? But this is what he's saying to the children, the children who are going to inhabit the land that the Lord promised him, that the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. And in my Charles Stanley Life Principles Bible, his comment on this verse, the very first phrase is, God is committed to you. Friend, God is committed to you. He has committed so much that he gave his son. And scripture tells us that he's committed to us throughout, that he's always working in our best interests, and that he has already made a path. Like he is so committed to us being successful in life and business, in his kingdom purpose, which we'll get to in a minute, that he has already made a path through our obstacles, right? Like, come on, somebody right there. And then King David, imparting wisdom to King Solomon, his son, in 1 Chronicles 28, 20 says, be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God, my God, David says, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And this is what he is telling Solomon around um, building the temple and reminding him that regardless of what happens, the Lord is committed to us, that he is committed to us and we need to be committed to him by following in obedience. Now let's go into the New Testament. Now you may be like, um, you're not going in order. <laughs> I hear you, friend. I get it. But we're going to go to Hebrews, right? In Hebrews 6, 13, I love this verse. I came across this verse in that article um, and other research I was doing because what this tells me is like, God not only keep, makes promises, but he keeps promises. And you know, like if we say like, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Like we're swearing to God, but who does God swear to? Well, there's no one above him. So this is what this says. When God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one else greater, he swore by himself. Like he was so committed to make the promise and keep the promise. He's swearing to himself. Like, I mean, come on, right? All right. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And what this tells us, sorry, I'm a little all over the place. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. <clears throat> No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. Like we are going to be tempted. And oh, by the way, the enemy wants to get us distracted and doubtful so that we won't keep our commitment, so that we will see our commitment as hard or we won't follow through. Like that's exactly what he wants. But God is faithful because he will not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability with him and his strength. And that he's also made a way of escape from the temptation, right? Just like we heard earlier, that he has already made a path because he knows that we'll face obstacles. That 
is commitment. In 1 Peter 5, 17, where it tells us to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. And that repeatedly through scripture, we are told not to fear because he can handle anything for us because he is that committed to us. And then the last couple of places that I want to take you in Philippians 1, 6, where Paul says to be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. He is committed to its completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And, and why? Why? Because what he tells us is unchanging and will come to fruition. As he says in Isaiah 55, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth that shall not return to me void and it shall accomplish what I please. Like, that is his commitment to us, friends. Listen, we have all seen that commitment is doing what we said we would do long after the sentiment fades with which we made the commitment, long after that excitement fades at the beginning, long after we promised that we would get it done. I am not telling you that when you committed to reach a certain level or a certain title or a certain income that God can't change that because he can. I am living proof of that. I've seen my clients do the same. They've had incredibly successful businesses. Maybe it was real estate or um, home care for seniors or speaking or even coaching and God has shifted and yet they thought they were going this way. They were on this trajectory and they made a commitment to get that done. But the most important commitment is the commitment that we make to him first and foremost. It is the chief commitment of our lives to be committed to the Lord first because we are intended, we are made to work with him. We are made to be his co-laborers. And that means committing everything that we do, everything that we want for his glory, all of our work, all of our actions, all of our motives. And it means entrusting that work, entrusting our action, entrusting our businesses to him so that he can cause them to bear fruit according to his will. The last place that I want to take you in scripture is just to remind you that God foreknew you and that he justified you and he glorified you and that he predestined you. And therefore, what can the world do to us? And this is what it says in Romans 8, 28. Let me get there. <clears throat> now, I want to, or 828 through 38. I really want to encourage you to read this passage because we all know that 828 says he works all things together for our good. And we're like, yeah, come on, God, bring me the good. But this is what it says. That, that he... <laughs> Um, that those who are called according to his purpose are those for whom all things will work together, right? But this is what he says. Those who are he, whom he foreknew that he predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Well, one way that we're conformed to the image of Christ is being as committed to our father as he was to the father. That whom he predestined, you and me, he is called. And whom he called, he is justified. And whom he justified, he is glorified. Friends, that is us. And so therefore, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is committed to us, who can stop that? No one, no one. But we can get in our own way if we're not committed to him. And then it goes on to say that he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, how shall he not also freely give us all things? This is not claim it and like name it and claim it. This is not law of attraction, new age. No, no, no. This is if the Lord did this for Jesus and he's so committed to us that he gave his son, why would he not give us all we need? Why would he not cause our businesses to be fruitful when we have committed to them, committed our businesses to him, surrendered to him when we are obedient and we are willing to be trusting, consistent and all in for him? Because we are more than conquerors and nothing shall separate us from his love except ourselves, right? That's the importance of us being committed. And that's what it means 
to be committed because he modeled it for us first. So if you've wondered, how is the Lord committed to me? I just gave you all the scripture, but there's more. But here's what I want you to know. Go get yourself that four keys document. You can download it, aaronharrigan.com, four keys. It outlines define, direct, discipline, and develop, which is exactly what we're going to be using to guide us and navigate this topic of commitment this month. And I want to encourage you that if this encouraged you, share it with someone and join me in the conversation. Tag me on social, use hashtag pursuing success God's way. You can use hashtag commitment, um, but it is truly about God modeling commitment for us first and then us following that and glorifying him by giving our commitment back to him. So be sure you're following the podcast, screenshot it and share, and make sure you tune in next week when we're going to be talking about the command or the direction of commitment. I'll see you then.